Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why No One Place. This is a video series I have running on my channel where I talk about champions in League of Legends that currently see fringe play in both the competitive scene and solo queue. So basically any time in between the past two to three years or relative to their just general deployment history, which means I'm not counting one patch or two where they might have been picker banned because of a balance change. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about Anivia. This was somewhat requested from a few of my viewers and I actually had her in my sights for a while because She's that type of champion that everyone knows is pretty good, and not really much of a deviant from standard champion design, yet there's very few instances where she's like super pick or ban, and it's rare to see her in this day and age. If this is your first time watching my channel, I'd like to first say welcome, but just to put a disclaimer that this series is not meant to bash a champion or say that they're weak or a troll pick, and I'd like not to discourage anyone from playing them. If anything, I suggest you do give them a try because it could be an interesting change of pace, as for those who play and or main the champion in question, my intent behind why no one plays is to bring to light and create discussion over possible reasons as to why certain champions may not see as wide of a following as others. So this is not meant to be a hate series in any way. Having said all that, if you find this video enjoyable, then please be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and share this video with your friends. Also, check out my other League videos if you're interested, and consider donating to my Patreon to support the channel. But with that out of the way, let's just get right into it. When it comes to champions and whether they become popular or not, it usually depends on three things. The user experience, or in layman's terms, just how comfortable and how good it feels to play a champion. Uh, next is their individual agency, what their impact and contribution is to a team and the overall game. Lastly, their strength, speed, and consistency relative to their peers. I usually don't like comparing champions because with a few exceptions, all champions are for the most part unique and they bring something different to the table, but for the longest time, Anivia has been a victim of the very archetype that she basically pioneered. She's a battle mage, which is the first one we've seen since I restarted the series back in May, and while I covered a few mages in the past, Anivia will be the first one to represent her subclass. Battle mages are mid-range fighters who possess very consistent DPS, and usually high area of effect to compensate for their relatively short range and lack of front-loaded burst damage. Simply put, they're the magic version of fighters. Normally, these champions also come with some defensive measure built into their kit. Either it's health sustain like Vladimir and Swain, maybe you'd have a shield if you're playing Rumble or Victor, or strong area control like Cassiopeia and Talia. They're also pretty slow mobility-wise and need prime positioning and situational awareness to keep themselves useful. Otherwise, they can easily be singled out and taken down quickly because they put themselves smack into the middle of enemy fire. Generally, battle mages are very popular picks in solo queue because they can ensure late game stability that burst champions may not have without necessarily being too vulnerable, something artillery champions struggle with. On a side note, I don't think this list is exactly too accurate since I feel like champions like Silas, Orianna, and Brand make more sense to be in battle mages, not really burst, but uh, that's besides the point. We've seen many of her colleagues have great success when it comes to being played, and yet even though she's no pushover herself, Anivia has almost never been able to really take the reins. If anything, she's been slowly becoming more and more obscure as time went on to the point where her pick rate and win rate have both just been trickling down for the better part of two years. In fact, she hasn't received a major balance change since 2016 when there was that mage rework, meaning she has received no changes at all basically aside from a few universal ones, yet during this time she's become worse and worse in both popularity and pick rate. Normally when a champion's results and statistics run a downward trend through no action of their own, it means other factors come into play, and if you remember what I said about user experience, agency, and strengths, this is where Anivia has started to age rather poorly. The first issue she runs into is that Anivia is an extremely slow champion in a game where tempo and momentum are becoming more and more essential to the needs and wants of the players and game state. This isn't the first time I've talked about this problem, and it certainly won't be the last. So many champions in the series have been victims of the fast-paced environment permeating the game for the latter half of the past decade. Velkaz, Cho'Gath, Kog'Ma, Tom Kench, but I feel like Anivia has the worst of the ones I've covered so far. She's an extremely procedural champion, focusing on gradually forcing the enemy team into a bad situation and then smothering them out to close the game. She's pretty good at what she does, yes. The only bad thing is that what she does is becoming less and less of a viable strategy in League of Legends. Games are closing out much quicker nowadays than they did back in Season 6, when game lengths were at their peak due to the tank meta and there was a lot of systems built into place to basically guarantee that the timer would very rarely if ever go past 40 minutes unless both teams were deliberately playing slowly, which you never see in solo queue. See, first we have turret plating, which was initially designed to make snowballs harder by preventing towers from going down too quickly, but what that actually did was increase the total gold supply accessible to champions on the rift, because each plate is worth 160 gold, and with 15 in place that means you can get a total of 2400 bonus gold. Secondly, Rift Herald was added, two of them now, and as you know, 
Shelly's pretty damn good at taking down turrets. You can easily get one or even two with her if used correctly. Not only that, Baron has become more impactful in gold experience and minion empowerment. Also, teams can take it down much earlier than they used to be able to. You can usually score a Baron the moment it spawns, whereas back then, you'd normally saw the first Baron taken at like 30 to 35 minutes. Then there's Dragon Souls, which can easily be obtained as early as 21 minutes. Ocean and Infernal Souls are practically game-winning in most circumstances, providing insane combat stats to champions that didn't exist before. And if all that wasn't enough to end the game, there was the Elder Dragon, which was almost always a guaranteed 5v5 win. All of these put in place make it very obvious that the faster your team can snowball, the better. Naturally, this also means champions who play patiently and scale, like Anivia, are inherently at a disadvantage because the tempo of the game has increased dramatically. Her abilities emphasize punishing mispositions and zoning out enemy threats. In other words, she's the best champion when it comes to long drawn out sieges due to her insane area control and wave clear. But we live in an age where champions are becoming more and more mobile because every new champion added to the game has either a dash, a blink, or something like that. In fact, of the 20 newest champions in the game not counting reworks, there are only 4 that do not have any form of dash or movement enhancers. And even those four champions have something to circumvent their immobility, such as Senna's high range, Nico's camouflage, Zaya's ultimate and her W movement speed burst, and Aphelios, he's well, he's Aphelios. Uh, taking these two into consideration, the fact that games are much faster because of the gameplay elements along with champions as a whole being much faster and more fluid, punishing mistakes or catching someone out has gotten a little bit harder for Anivia, at least on her own, and with that sufficient protection from her allies, it's very easy for her to get caught out in a bad position herself especially since she has to be so close to a teamfight. Crystallize and Glacial Storm Traps don't work as easily anymore because many champions can just dash out of it. Though I don't think it's fair to assume her qualities are completely useless, she can still do that. She's still really freaking powerful if landing her abilities and all, it's just much harder than it used to be. That brings you straight to point number two, Anivia is a battle mage who completely lacks unconditional defense. No, I don't count her egg as one. If she misses Flash Frost on an engaging target, there's almost nothing standing between them and her because she lacks self-peel or high movement escapes that Victor, Vladimir, and Oriana have. Whereas, you know, Karthus, he doesn't really care if he dies. To a certain extent, she's similar to Kogma in that if given enough protection, she can probably single-handedly hyper-carry a teamfight. But the amount of effort the team has to put in to enable her to do so, it's not only impractical in pro play, but trying to get even one person to swallow their pride and play around you is not exactly an easy task. The damage output Anivia produces is massive. Her Q deals 320 plus 90% AP ratio if you land both parts, easy to do. Her Empowered E is another 300 damage with a 1 to 1 AP scaling, and a full size Glacial Storm can do 240 base plus 37.5% AP per second. Because she's a battle mage, she can easily do 3, 4, 5, maybe 6 rotations over spells in the teamfight if given the opportunity to do so. The threat of Anivia melting an entire team is very much real, but so is the threat of being melted herself, no pun intended. Another major source of difficulty for Anivia is her really poor range. While champions like Velkos can comfortably hide over a wall and laser down an entire team, Anivia has to be very close to the enemy team to deal her damage, with all four of her spells having a max range no greater than 1000 units. Not very much considering most dashes in the game are around 500 to 700. Other champions with shorter cast ranges like Vagar, Lissandra, and Vladimir have the defensive tools to respond to counterattack, but Anivia doesn't. She can wreak havoc amongst enemy teams that have no mobility, but that's not exactly something that she can decide. Players generally shy away from champions whose maximum potential hinges on factors outside of their control. That's often the reason why other battle mages are more popular, because they trade in some raw damage for more self-sufficiency. Oriana is often favored because she has a little more versatility in teamfights while offering comparable area control. Karthus has the same ridiculous damage output while also having just an infinitely better passive. Cassiopeia may be more single target focused, but she has two amazing defensive tools and kiting capabilities that she can easily fend for herself. You get the idea by now. Anivia may have way more damage and area control than any of the ones I just talked about, but it comes at the cost of being extremely counterable and thus reducing consistency. She already struggles with being consistent since champions have gotten so much more mobile, making it hard for her Q and R to always work to their full effect. But not only that, she just has much less stability. Glacial Storm's worst attribute is that it completely cancels whenever Anivia is affected by hard crowd control, something that's very easy to do because she's in range of set hard crowd control almost all the time. Her most iconic ability can be flat out removed from a fight for a few seconds. Just imagine if the same thing happened to Karthus's Defile or Cassiopeia's Miasma. They'd be just as crippled. To my knowledge, Glacial Storm actually used to stay active even when she got crowd controlled or if she was forced into her passive, but they removed it because they thought it would be too broken. 
but it wouldn't be in this day and age. I'm sure a lot of Anivia mains can attest to the frustration of losing half your damage basically just because the enemy Rakan decided to dash two screens ahead and hit you with a charm, or Leona threw her ultimate from like a full 1200 units away, or Leeson kicked you far away. There's just so many things that can go wrong in a teamfight that you have to be aware of while other champions from that subclass don't really have to care about it whatsoever. Basically, Anivia's kit is outdated for the current environment of League. Mistakes are much less punishing than they were before, more champions are coming out that have tools to avoid much of what makes her strong. Combine that with the ever-increasing pace of gameplay actively working against her role as a patient and methodical siege mage, and it makes her champion that she's too circumstantial to really not be that appealing to pick up from the general population. Sure, when those circumstances are met, Anivia is one of the best anti-carry champions in the game. But there's hardly any games these days where there just isn't someone like Rengar, Leona, Camille, Katarina, Jin, Wukong, like there's just too many champions that render her practically useless, not even counting the champions that straight up beat her in lane. The meta has just not been too kind to her, and she's definitely having a hard time staying relevant because we've been in this sort of hard engage every man for themselves playstyle ever since like season 7. The only proposal I have to make her feel a lot better to play is just for her ultimate to stay out even if she's in her passive or CC. It may have been broken back then, but again, I feel like now that's just going to put her in at least a better position to where enemy champions might have to think twice about engaging on her because they won't be coming out of the fight unscathed if she drops it right on herself. Aside from that, she just needs some actual reliable defense. Crystallize can be a very impactful ability, especially in choke points, but it's not nearly as versatile as some other abilities that other mages have. Actually, I want to know, what do you guys think, all the Anivia mains who are watching this video, because I can definitely see the strengths in her kit, but from the perspective of a person who doesn't main her, the cons outweigh the pros too much at the current moment. It's hard to really consider a lot of scenarios where Anivia is just a superior pick in both practicality and enjoyability. Anyways, that's going to be it for today. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hope it was insightful and entertaining for you. Once again, please do not take this video as me saying you should not play her. I know I just said a bunch of negative things about Anivia, but once again, my intention is just to bring light to the possible reasons why players in general don't really see her too appealing to pick up. And if you do enjoy that patient and procedural playstyle, she might actually just be a perfect fit for you. But if you had a good time watching this episode of Why No One Plays, it would be awesome if you could leave a like and make sure to share this with your friends. Let me know what they think about the champion. If you do have any opinions on our favorite frozen chicken, positive or negative, let me know in the comment section below. Finally, if you'd like to support the series and this channel, consider checking out my Patreon and becoming a donator, but of course, I'll continue making these types of videos just because I enjoy them. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for future episodes, but for now, thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon for the next video. Take care.